All right, this video is for Shreya, who had posted this beautiful image of a newborn baby. And I uh, was having just a little bit of trouble creating a nice soft uh, color haze around the edges here. So what we're going to do in the video is do a bit of cloning to bring this uh, teal blanket out towards uh, the edges a little bit more before we apply the color fade from our newborn action collection. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started by duplicating our background layer, okay? Never like to work on uh, the background layer just because if you make any mistakes, it's really hard to go back and change that sometimes. So I'm going to layer in my uh, menu bar here. We're going to select duplicate layer. I'll just name this clone since we're going to do some cloning. Uh, and let's go ahead and select our clone tool in the toolbar. If you don't see it, just right click and select that clone tool. Okay, so the way a clone tool works is it, it copies the selection, or the area rather, that you select. So you need to look at your image, decide where you're copying and what area you want it to copy from. So I want to copy this part of the blanket as best I can. Uh, up over here to the right a little bit more. So I'm going to press Option or Alt. Uh, let's see here. So it's, it's this is a really distinct pattern. So I'm really going to have to pay attention and maybe go back uh, back and forth a little bit here to make sure that the pattern it looks right when I'm painting. So um, let's go ahead and just start from the top over here. Um, so I'm going to press Option or Alt and then click to sample that area. So notice no matter where my brush is at the moment, I have that little pattern following me. Okay, so you do want to work with a fairly small brush. You can make it larger and smaller with the left and right bracket keys. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to start right here. And again, this is really trial and error with patterns. Okay, notice I went a little bit too far there. So um, I'm going to have to go back and cover that here in a moment. But for now, I'm just going to keep on uh, painting the blanket over here on the top area. It's looking really nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep on going. Now once I get down towards the bottom a little bit, I'm going to have to resample. I already know that just because I've already gone into a point where it's, it's down here sampling from this cute little uh, back piece uh, on the baby. So I'm just going to keep painting until I get down to that point. Okay, it looks like I'm still fine over here and that's where we're starting to um, copy part of this back piece on the baby. So what I'm going to do here is find an area that I want to continue to copy. And I'm just gonna go up a little bit higher. What I'm doing is just eyeballing the pattern and trying to decide what I want to copy and bring down here that's going to look realistic. So I'm going to press Control or Command, or I'm sorry, Option or Alt and click, there we go. And I'm going to continue that pattern. Okay, it's looking pretty realistic. There might be a, a crinkle or two here just with the, the pattern variations. And so I'm, I'm pretty happy with this over here in the right hand corner. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have down here on the left. And you don't have to be too perfect and, and stretching it out all the way to the edge here. I'm actually not going to do anything here at the top left, just because we're going to apply the color fade and the white blanket is not going to be too evident. Um, so I'm going to press Alt or Option and click right here. Make my brush maybe a little bit larger. And I'm going to just start um, painting so I can, whoops, 
And if you find that, notice right here that I'm starting to copy some of baby's skin. You can see that little piece there. So I'm going to resample over here and just click and cover that up. Okay, lots of resampling with cloning, guys. Notice I'm clicking Option or Alt to resample, especially with small areas. So as soon as I move my brush up here a little bit, it's, it's starting to sample baby. So I'm going to go over here, Option or Alt, click. And then keep going, still resampling every now and again. Okay, it's absolutely normal to have to constantly resample from an area, especially again when you have, we had such a little bit of the blue blanket up here. So don't think you're doing something wrong if you have to resample constantly. Uh, that's absolutely okay and normal. Oh, so that's looking pretty good to me. And again, we're applying a nice soft fade here. So let's go ahead and I like to take a snapshot just in case I have to go back to this image state. Let's say I add my fade and I'm like, oh, you know what? Maybe I do want to cover this area at the top. I can easily go back to this state. So I'm going to open my history panel, click on the little menu bar and select new snapshot real quick here. So I can go back into this point in time uh, with my layers present just by clicking on my first snapshot. Okay, so we're all done. Let's go ahead and apply, or we're done with the cloning <laughs> rather. Uh, we're going to apply one of our blanket brushes uh, and I want to apply blanket fade. Okay, so I'm going to select that here and press play. Continue. Continue, okay. So now I get to pick my blanket color, which is really nice because it's going to match whatever blanket you have. And you need to think, uh, you know, what the blanket has different variations of shades. So think about where you're selecting within the blanket. I want kind of a darker teal, just because I like that fade on the outside to be just slightly darker than uh, the lightest shade of the blanket. So I'm gonna press okay. And my action has played. Make sure you have your brush tool selected. I'm going to keep the opacity at 100%. Okay, and this is our opacity at the top options bar. Okay, I like to paint with a fairly large brush when I'm doing a fade. And again, I'll start at 100% and I can always bring that down later. Okay, so this is our nice fade and I can go in and change the color here in a moment. I still want it to be just a little bit darker. So um, I'll be able to do that here. Okay, so this is our nice fade. I'm just going to keep going along here and kind of molding uh, the fade, making that look really nice. Now, if you accidentally paint on part of baby, just bring the black, uh, black to the foreground color down here and go over the areas that you want to remove the fade that maybe you had painted over. Definitely want to make sure it's not on baby's face. And I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 50% just to kind of give it a little bit more of a natural fade. There we go. Okay, I really like that. Let's go ahead and play with this blanket fade a little bit here. I'm just going to bring the actual opacity of the action up to 100%. I'm going to open it up. If you're running uh, elements, you'll need to open it with the action at the bottom of your folder or of your layers collection. Uh, it's called Open Folder PSE. Okay, so Soften Fade gives a little bit of a blur. Um, so you can go ahead and play with that. I kind of liked that at 80%, so I'm gonna keep that there. Okay, and this is our blanket color. So this is where I can go in and kind of change the color and click around a little bit uh, and press OK. So I'm gonna keep that right around there. And next I want to run, uh, let me find it real quick here the hazy edges. So I'm going to press play, continue, 
And again, I'm going to select uh, kind of a darker teal. Okay, there we go. So we're just going to apply a little bit of haze. Now this first, the blanket fade is nice because it gives you that faded kind of blur, uh, which is nice to have in the background and foreground uh, on a blanket. So let me go ahead and bring my opacity up to 100% again on that brush. The nice thing is I can always go in and play with the actual opacity of the action later on. Just to make it maybe a little bit um, more subtle or a little bit more dramatic. Okay. So I'm just going to bring the opacity down a little bit. I want to get a nice natural fade. Notice I'm just clicking around here, right around the edges. Okay, so now I'm going to bring black to my foreground color. And again, I'm really focusing on just getting that nice fade. You don't want it to look like you necessarily painted on. So I'm just going to remove a little bit of that fade around the edges. Notice my brush opacity is at 29. I'm not removing all of it. I'm just allowing that, that nice natural fade to occur. Okay, so I'm really, really liking this. And I want to make sure that I didn't get any on uh, baby, so let me just bring that to 100%. Sometimes with the really large brushes, the paint can really extend outwards pretty far, so make sure you remove all of that from the baby. All right, so. I'm really liking that. Again, I can play with this opacity and bring it all the way up, which does not look very natural. I'm going to keep that right around 70%. Bring that down here. Okay, or 68, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up here. You can click on the color and change that. I really like the way it is. And we have a little bit more softening here in the soften layer. So at this point, I am looking at the image and I'm thinking hmm, maybe I should have brought some of the blanket up on the left hand side because that, that little bit of white does still bother me. So I would go back and redo that, but um, you get the point with the cloning. Um, it's really, really simple to do this with the newborn collection in combination with that cloning just to bring the blanket up. Now I do want to mention if this was a solid blanket without the pattern, you could use the blanket fill brush just to extend that color outwards, but it's really important that you do keep the pattern in uh, a blanket like this so it looks very, very natural. So in that case, yes, you do want to use the clone brush. All right, so I hope everyone enjoyed watching um, my quick blanket edit and how to use the Blanket Feed and Hazy Edges brush to complete a really nice creamy fade.